Bless them, Lord. Bless them. What? Well, that might be good. Yeah. Well, I might. That, all that right there. Right now, I'll just put this in there instead of going up into that. Since we're not practicing anything. Let me run through this guitar. You know, I was talking to someone on the phone this morning, and the uh, Prime Minister of Britain and England and all the people were in there. They said they canceled Christmas, and uh, the individual asked me what I thought of that, and I said, well, you know, I mean, I don't get it wrong, I'm still going to get my grandbabies and my children and stuff for Christmas, but I said, well, maybe that'll give people uh, the opportunity to do nothing else. I sit at home, read God's Word, and find the true man. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm serious. We've not practiced this little song, but bless they were blessed enough on those keys. This is a very complicated <laughs> song to play, but we've not practiced it, but <laughs> we practice on you all, all the time. And I know Tony is excited to have his, his uh, sibling there. Just uh, thankful for, we're, I mean, I'm thankful for a lot of good news I've heard this week. I've heard some news that you know was it but anyway I know everyone has heard this song and uh, let me get this cable okay we're going to try to do this to where I can show some uh, kind of sports Mary cause if we die probably where it's comfortable for me I'm gonna have to draw a point I cut Mary way up there and I just don't want to do it like that but anyway Listen, Listen to the words Listen. of his song. Can you imagine, oh, you know Mary did, <clears throat> that was her baby. And, uh, you know, we, I love to study about Mary and the relationship with her son. This song says, Mary, did you know that when you kissed this little baby, and if she did, she was literally kissing the face of God. Yeah. I mean, that's right. so true. But anyway, we're trying to do this little song. Bless the Lord.
practice. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's the second one. Okay. Amen. God bless you, Brother Larry. And so, uh, Miss I Mary, Brother Andy. Up. Up. God bless you all. <laughs> Miss Chris, if you got a hymn, would you share that with us, yes. please? Yes. Uh, the hymn is, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Amen. Amen. And um, I just want to explain, I have a hearing loss. I have Meniere's disease. And I also have hearing aids. But... I usually can't hear that. I can hear you, so you don't adjust. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can't, I can't hear that. And, yeah. and I look for lips moving or hands moving. And um, so give me a break, please. Um, I'm, I'm <laughs> Bless her, Lord. Bless her. Sunday school hour, we uh, looked at some different truths found here in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number two. And this portion of scripture is so rich with truth uh, in regard to the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's almost impossible to cover everything in one service. And so I devoted part of the Sunday school hour to some of the truths found here in Luke, chapter number two. And uh, this morning, we're going to look at some more truth found here in Luke, chapter number two. We'll pick up reading in verse number one. We'll read down through verse number 7 this morning. 
Luke chapter number 2, verse number 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and into Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house, uh, uh, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that they, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Now notice this. Why did she do all of this? Because there was no room for them in the inn. And so the title of this morning's message is No Room This Morning. No Room. And so let's take this opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the Scriptures this morning. Dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house to worship Thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we're so thankful, dear Lord, for all the answered prayers uh, that you've bestowed upon us uh, this past week. Father, Lord, we just thank you and praise you, dear Lord, for answering many prayers this past week. And Father, we just trust and ask and pray and believe that you're going to answer many more prayers in the days to come, Heavenly Father. And Lord, uh, I pray this morning, dear Lord, that you would be with us uh, throughout the remainder of the service. We thank you, dear Lord, that your power and your presence has already been felt here this morning. Lord, we thank you for the Sunday school hour and for uh, the testimonies and for the music that we've heard this morning. Lord, we just thank you and praise you, dear Lord, for what's already taken place here today. And Lord, uh, we pray now that you bless in the remainder of the service. I pray that we all would open up our ears and our hearts to the preaching of thy word, that we'd be closer drawn to thee, and that we would learn something to help us in our daily walk with thee. And Lord, help me as I preach this morning. Give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Lord, strengthen my lungs and my voice to be able to declare thy blessed word. And Father, I pray that uh, uh, this morning, if there's uh, one here that is, has no room for Jesus in their heart, dear Lord, or has never given Jesus any place in their heart here, dear Lord, uh, in their heart today, Lord, I pray that you would deal with them about eternity, deal with them about salvation, Lord, convict them of their sin, draw them into yourself, and I pray that they come forward today and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done, and we thank you and praise you for what you're going to do, for it's in Jesus' name we do ask and pray all these things, and amen. amen. <laughs> Notice here, yes. verses 6 and 7, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and so Mary... Uh, was getting ready to give birth uh, to baby Jesus. Uh, she was at that appointed time and at that appointed hour. And beloved, uh, they went to an inn to try to find some comfort, to try to find some help. Uh, but beloved, uh, when they got to the inn, the innkeeper said, you know what, we're full up. There's no room here at the inn. And so notice in verse number seven, and she brought forth her firstborn son. And by the way, I know Mary was a woman. And I know that there's texts out there that say Jesus was born of a woman. Well, to a certain degree, that's true. Yes, Mary was a woman. Uh, yes, he was born of a woman. But Mary was a virgin. Amen. He was not, uh, Jesus Christ was not defiled with man's sinful blood. She was conceived by the, or Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. It was a miraculous divine conception. Behold, and a virgin shall conceive. Now, beloved, I know childbirth within itself is a miracle. And we all were born of a woman. And yes, that's a miraculous process that takes place. But Mary had not known a man. She was a virgin. And Jesus was conceived by the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. And beloved, Amen. there's other texts out there that say otherwise. Bless That's why you need to stay in the King James Amen. Bible. Amen. Right. If you want the truth. Amen. Amen. Right. And so, yeah. beloved, this miraculous divine birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless and she Lord. brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Why? Because Amen. there was no room for them in the end. That's right. Uh, beloved, uh, there was no room for 
baby Jesus in the world then. And beloved, today there's no room, it seems like, in the world for Jesus today. Not much has changed. Amen. And beloved, what a tragic statement that is. And beloved, uh, I believe there are three things that contribute to not being any room for Jesus today. Uh, one of that is ignorance. Uh, and I don't mean that in a cruel way. Some are willingly ignorant. The Bible teaches that and tells us that. Some just don't know the true meaning of Christmas. They don't know about Jesus Christ. The second thing is there's indifference. Some people just simply don't care. And what a travesty that is. I've witnessed to people that tell me, you know what? I don't want to hear about Jesus. I don't care about what He did on the cross of Calvary. I don't care about eternity. I'm just concerned about what I'm doing today and the here and in the now. One day they'll wish they would have given Jesus some consideration. And then last of all is involvement with worldly things. Being involved with too many worldly things. And so, beloved, let's look at ignorance first of all. Uh, beloved, uh, a few months ago, I was going through the drive through uh, at a local restaurant here in town. And uh, I try to make this a habit. I don't do it every single time. Uh, sometimes I run out of gospel tracks. Uh, uh, sometimes I, I just simply forget. But I try to make it a habit that when I go through a drive through whether it's at a bank or whether it's at a restaurant or at a, a, a paying a bill, whatever the case may be, I try to hand out a gospel tract and share the gospel message. If I go into a gas station and uh, pay for the, the gas uh, that I'm getting for the vehicle, I try to leave a gospel tract. Uh, there are sometimes people will look at that, they'll read it, sometimes they'll inquire about it, uh, sometimes they'll read it, look at it, take it, throw it in the garbage can. Sometimes some people, I've watched them, as soon as they see something about Jesus or the church on there, they'll throw it in the garbage can. Uh, beloved, I remember talking to a young lady as I was going through the drive-thru. I handed her my payment. I handed her a gospel tract. This girl couldn't have been anywhere between maybe uh, 17 and 20, 21 years old. She was of young age. And I remember as she sat there and she was counting out my change, she deliberately stopped. She looked at the tract. She glanced over it. She handed me back my change. And she asked me a very interesting question. She said, who is Jesus Christ? That about floored me. Here we are living in quote unquote what's called the Bible pipe, Bible Belt. Yeah. Live here in East Tennessee yeah. within one square mile of our church. There are six other churches besides our church living here in the Bible Belt. And here is a young teenage American young girl who has never heard about Jesus Christ. And so she doesn't know anything about eternity. She obviously doesn't know the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, beloved, what a shame that is. And beloved, it's up to us as born-again believers, as children of God, to tell others about Jesus Christ. The government sure is not going to do it. Our school systems are not going to do it. It's up to us, born-again believers, to evangelize and tell others about Jesus Christ. Amen. That absolutely broke my heart. Yeah. And I said, ma'am, I said, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And I said, He came here upon this earth and died on the cross to pay for your sins and my sins and for the sins of the entire world because man's going to spend eternity in one of two places. And I said, would you like for me to tell you more? Well, maybe some other time, but I've got to get back to work now. Uh, beloved, what a travesty that is. Uh, beloved, that people in East Tennessee do not yeah. know Jesus Christ. Never even heard of His name. That's right. yeah. I remember I was, before I came here to this church to become pastor here at Liberty at the other church that I was a member at that time, I remember a missionary came in. And beloved, when we talk about missionaries, automatically, I don't know about you, but my mind defaults to Ethiopia, to Russia, to Malaysia, to the Philippines, a foreign mission country yeah. to go share the gospel message. Yeah. And we had a missionary come in. It was either to North or South Dakota. Some of y'all here may remember that. Thanks. And I'm like, this is interesting. Why would we want to support a missionary to the United States of America? And they had went and done a survey and uh, talked to so many teenage children and out of 100, it was like uh, the upper 60s or low 70% of teenage 
children that lived in either North or South Dakota, and this was back in 2001, 2002, had never heard the name of Jesus Christ. What a travesty that is. Yes, yes. And we wonder what's wrong with America today. Amen. It's because we've gotten away from telling others about Jesus Christ. We're trying to build our foundation upon entertainment, upon sports, upon religion. We need to build the foundation of this nation upon the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And beloved, when we do that, America will. Yeah. America will experience a great revival Bless you, when we get back to exalting the name of Christ Amen. and telling others about Jesus Christ. Bless you, but the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, This I say therefore, and testify to the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. And beloved, no doubt there are people today that are ignorant to the truth and the message of God's Word because of the blindness of their heart. And it's because the Satan has blinded, the, uh, has blinded their eyes to the glorious gospel light and message uh, or message of the gospel. He's got them blinded. And beloved, we need to give out light and we need to share the truth of God's Word. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, in other words, be alert, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Now, beloved, there were some things that I've done in my past that I did not, did not realize were wrong until somebody told me the truth and I read the truth of God's Word. I was ignorant to it. And beloved, when I pray, I even do this today, when I ask God to forgive me of sin, I ask Him to, I confess my sins to Him, and I ask Him to cleanse me of any secret or hidden fault, and any fault that I may be ignorant to. I ask Him to cleanse me and make me whole, and use me to be a vessel of honor unto Him. Amen. And beloved, there are some people that are just willingly ignorant. They don't want to know. Uh, sometimes I say this, I find myself guilty of saying this sometimes, and I certainly try to be careful uh, to answer in the proper context. But sometimes what you don't know don't hurt you. Amen. And in some things that's good, but in spiritual things in regard to Christ and eternity, that's bad. Right. But there are some people that don't want to know because if they know, uh-oh, of whom much is given... Right. Much is required. Yes. And no oh, goodness, now I'm accountable for what I know. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. Yes. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of this coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Has anybody ever told you that recently? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I hear it all the time. Well, preacher, they've been saying Christ is coming back for years. Where's he at? He's not coming back yet. He's not coming back. Oh yeah, he is. He's just not got to the appointed time yet. But he is coming back. Just like the Old Testament prophets prophesied about the birth of Christ and down through the generations. He's not coming. He's not going to be born. That's a false prophecy. Uh-oh. It just was fulfilled. And guess what? The rapture of the church is going to take place. I don't know when. But I believe it's going to happen soon. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Notice here, verse number 5, For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and they are standing out of the water and in the water. And beloved, there are some people that just want to plead ignorance. They don't want to know. They're willingly ignorant. Have you ever been with a job on somebody like that? You try to train them and try to teach them? Some of you all nodding your head. Yeah, I've tried to train people like that. They don't want to know how to do their job. Why? Because if they know, they're going to have to work and earn their pay. But if they plead ignorance, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, uh, that's a, a funny saying where I work at. And uh, uh, my boss man says, I've heard that so much. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Pleading ignorance. Yeah. Well, listen, you might be able to get by with that on the job. 
And you might be able to get by with that in other areas of this life, but when you stand before God, that's not going to hold water. Amen. Uh, pleading ignorance is not going to get you out of your accountability toward God. You know, another thing that uh, contributes to no room being in the end is people's apathy and lack of concern. Indifferent. They just don't care. I believe it to the society today, people today just seem like they don't care what they say. They don't care what they do. They don't care whose feelings they hurt. They don't care who they walk over to get what they want. That's true. And beloved, when it comes to spiritual things and the name of Jesus Christ and the gospel message, people today seem like they're just indifferent about it and they don't care. Now, beloved, you better care. Because, beloved, you have something inside of you that's more valuable than all the possessions of the world added up and put together. It's called your soul. Why shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You better be concerned about your soul. You better be concerned about eternity because you're going to spend eternity in one of two places, either in God's heaven or in a devil's hell, the lake of fire. Amen. And so, beloved... Indifference. It reminds me of that rich man that we read about in the Gospel of Luke where he had done this and he had done that and he had accomplished it and he had accomplished that. And God spoke to him and said, Thou fool, this night your soul is going to be required of thee. And what has these things profited you? In Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 21, we see that, see that account. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. I believe that's what's wrong today. It's all about me and what I want. Yeah. iPad, yeah. iPhone, yeah. iMessage, yeah. instant this. Bless you, Lord. Lord, help us. And he yeah. said unto them, Take heed and beware Bless of covenants, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. That certainly is not what the world teaches today. Uh, beloved, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's so many different kinds of scams and get-rich-quick schemes out there, yeah. but I, I know of an individual that has signed up on some kind of program, and every day he comes up to me, look here, got 200 more dollars, got 200 more dollars, got 400 more dollars, and it's some kind of pyramid thing, and the more people that signs up with him, right. they get money, and then he gets more yeah. money. Right. I've been told that's a scam. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm like, well, it's your money. You work hard for it. You do what you want to with it and everything. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's not what we've amassed here upon this earth that's going to allow us to get into heaven. Yeah. It's whether or not we've trusted Jesus Christ and have a personal relationship with Him. Uh, and He said to them, Take heed and beware of covetous, for man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man bought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, Now notice the personal pronoun I here. What shall I do? Because I have no room. <laughs> he didn't have any more room for goods, and he certainly had no room for Jesus Christ. Isn't that interesting? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. Look what I'm doing. Works. Look what I've accomplished. Surely God will look at me and see what all I've done and that will merit me eternity in heaven. No. We're saved by God's wonderful grace and our faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith and that out of yourselves. It is a gift of works. Or it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's a gift of God, not of works. And yet there are people think they're going to work their way into heaven. Let me tell you something. You may work your way up the corporate ladder here in America, but you're not going to work your way into heaven. You're only going to get in if you know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Amen. Notice here. And he said, this will I do. Uh, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul, soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. I believe the only thing that's going to amount for eternity is what you and I do for Jesus Christ. But here this man was laying up earthly treasures 
that will corrupt and will rot and that will burn up one day. Beloved, we better lay up our treasures up in heaven. Amen, Amen brother. Yes, and sir. seek after heavenly things yes. and after spiritual things. Amen, brother. Uh, people today, you know what? I don't care. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Yes, uh, beloved, you better have crossed that bridge today. Yeah, that's right. You better know where you're going to spend Amen. eternity. That's why the Bible says in regard to salvation, and beloved, if you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you've never been saved, never been born again, that's why the Word of God tells us, Behold, now is the accepted time. Yeah. Today is the day of salvation. Because, beloved, you're not promised tomorrow. Your right. soul may be required Amen. of you this afternoon. That's right, brother. You better get right with God Amen. today yeah. while it is today. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. And then last of all, you know what? Sometimes we just get involved with too many things. Lord. You know, beloved, some things that we get involved with, you know, I know there are responsibilities and cares of this life. We've got to work. Lord. Got to cook food. Got to prepare meals. Got to do laundry. Got to give the kids a bath. Got to help them with their homework. Got to put them to bed. I understand that there are cares of this life and there are responsibilities that we got to take care of on a day-to-day -day basis. But beloved, because we have those cares and because we have those responsibilities, it's not a license to leave Jesus Christ out of our daily life. But yet we get so consumed with entertainment and with religion and with sports and with Hollywood that we willfully leave Jesus Christ out of our lives. And we wonder why we have problems in our Christian homes. We wonder why we have difficulties in our churches. We wonder why there's such a great falling away in our nation Bless today. Yeah. Beloved, we get involved with too many things. You know, it reminds, reminds me back in the Old Testament when Noah, that preacher of righteousness, preached for 120 years judgment to come. Yeah. There's judgment coming. Man. There's a flood on the way. Yeah. You better get right with God. Yeah. The only way of deliverance is the ark. Which is a type or picture of Jesus Christ. And yet they laughed at him. They laughed at him. And then all of a sudden it began to rain. And then the fountains of the deep broke forward. And there was a flood. Judgment came. Guess what? Jesus Christ is coming again. Yes, he is, brother. And beloved, there's judgment yet to come. Amen. And in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 37 through 39. The word of God tells us, but as the days of Noah were, yeah. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that there were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Just like it was in the days of Noah. The party life, living it up. No concern for tomorrow. No worry about judgment. Now, beloved, is that not happening today just like it was in Noah's time? Then all of a sudden, judgment came. The flood came. That's why the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, Love not the world, neither the things in any world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth yeah. forever. Now, beloved, be careful who you're friends with. I hope you can say this morning, the best friend you've got yeah. is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. Yeah. James 4, chapter, James chapter 4, verse number 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. No man can serve two masters. You'll either love the one or hate the other. Sure. Listen, you can't walk with Christ and run with the devil at the Amen. same time. Amen. You'll either do one or you'll do the other, but you can't sure. do both. Right. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is, is the enemy of God. That's a strong statement, isn't it? You know, the problem is, is this. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, we all do what we want to do, do we not? Yeah. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 21, For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, we do what we want to do, we act how we want to act, we go where we want to go, we say what we want to say. Beloved, one day we're going to stand before God and we're going to give an account for it. Every one of those actions. Every single one of those words. 
And so, beloved, sometimes we just get involved with too many things. That's why there's no room for Jesus in our life. Now, beloved, I beseech of thee this morning. I beg of you this morning. If you're here and you've not given Jesus Christ any room in your heart, in your life, I beg of you today. Please, start making room for Him today. Friends, you'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. But just as there was no room for baby Jesus at the end, yeah. back then, there's no room for Jesus in the world today. And what a sad statement that is. Sure. But beloved, we're not of this world. We live in this world, but we're not of this world Amen. as a child of God. Right. And beloved, I hope that it's your heart's desire this morning yes, that every single person here yeah. is making room for Jesus in their heart and life today. Amen, brother. And so, that's all I have for us this morning. And at this time, I'd like to invite you to stand. Everyone's standing. Everyone's heads bowed. Everyone's eyes closed. If the musicians will make their way over to the instruments, I'll ask a question here this morning. Maybe there's someone here this morning and the Holy Spirit of God has spoken to your heart. And you're here this morning and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And if you're here today and you've never trusted Jesus as Lord and Savior, or you're not for sure where you would spend eternity, I'd like for you to raise your hand at this time and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you. But I am going to pray for you that you'll come forward and let somebody take the Word of God and show you how you can receive the greatest gift freely that has ever been given to mankind, that gift of salvation, the free pardon of sin. Anybody like that? Say, Preacher, pray for me. All right, I speak and say, people, now say, Preacher, when you pray, would you pray for me and my family? Me and my family have many needs that the Lord knows all about them. And when you pray, would you include me and my family in your prayers? God bless you. I see those hands. Hands all over the auditorium. God bless you. I see those hands. Dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, you saw the hands that were raised. You know the needs of your people. And Father, I pray for each and every person, each and every family that's here. I ask and pray that your hand of blessing would be upon each and every one. And Father, I pray that all of us here this morning would take into consideration of giving you more room in our heart and in our lives and in our family and in our homes, dear God. And Father, for those that could not be here this morning, you know their needs, you know their circumstance. And Father, I ask and pray that your hand of blessing would be upon those that could not be here. And Father, I pray now that you would bless this invitation. Have your will and way. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And now with the heads bowed and eyes closed, if you need to do business with the Lord this morning, I invite you to, invite you to come as the musicians play. If the Holy Spirit's dealing with your heart this morning, I invite you to come. Obey the Lord this morning. The Word of God tells us to Cast our care upon Him, for He care for you. No one will ever care for you like Jesus, and He wants to help you this morning. Will you lay?
All righty. Thank you. And God bless you. And all God's people say it. Amen. 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 Well, I trust and pray that everybody's had a wonderful uh, week and a blessed week. And I hope everybody's been blessed for being here in the service this morning. Yeah. Now, as you leave uh, uh, here today, well, first of all, I want to take this opportunity to wish everybody a, a very Merry Christmas. I hope everybody has a safe and healthy Christmas and enjoys time with friend, uh, friends and family. Uh, but as you leave here today, uh, I want to try to get maybe Brother Tony and uh, Brother Mark. Uh, there's some boxes back there in the back. Uh, on behalf of uh, uh, me and Christy, we've tried to do this every year since we've been here. Uh, we try to buy these uh, treat bags uh, to give to everybody. And so there's some water, some chips, uh, some candy, uh, uh, some fruit. Uh, there's also a Bible reading chart in there. Uh, that if you go through and start reading the, the King James Bible, three chapters a day, Monday through Saturday, five on Sunday, you can read the King James Bible through uh, from cover to cover in one calendar year. There's a Bible reading chart in there. And so uh, uh, we want to hand those to everybody that's here today. It's our gift to you. And uh, we want to say Merry Christmas, and we appreciate that very much. And also, if I can get maybe Brother Steve back there or Heath, I don't know if Steve can hear me or not, uh, but we also have a, 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 a this year's 2021 calendar uh, for Liberty Baptist Church and a, a, a Liberty Baptist Church pen uh, to hand out also. So it'll probably take about three of y'all to, to hand all that out. Uh, but uh, we want to place that into your hands today and wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Yes, Brother Tony. Uh, yes, I've got something here that uh, we want to present to you and say Merry Christmas. And, and we love you. It's a card, and there's a, there's a little gift in there for you. All right. To help you find well, I appreciate that very much. You want me to open it now? Or yes, sir. You want me to go ahead and open it now? All right. And so, yeah. so uh, yeah. it ain't going to jump out. It ain't going to jump out. Back in the box. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the intent for that is to help you this next year. All right. Along the way, the, the things that you have in you. All you right. To take care of in your life. All right. Well, uh, there's we a, a card. We love you. We love you and we thank God for you. Amen. 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 No other man can fill the shoes that you're filling right now because God sent you. Amen. God Amen. put you here. And we love you. Well, I love you too, Brother Tony. I appreciate you. And I love each and every one of y'all. And uh, uh, thank the Lord for each and every one that's here and for our church family and for uh, prayers. And uh, uh, the Lord's uh, putting this cancer in remission. And I believe He's going to continue Amen. to do that. Amen. 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 But he's going to continue to do that. And so there's a card here with a, a lot of uh, uh, signatures. And the card uh, says for you, to, for to you is born this day a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That's Luke 2, 11. Asking God to bless you with a season filled with peace, joy, and love. Merry Christmas. And there's a, uh, there's a check in here. And you all should not have done that. Uh, that is, uh, you all should not have done that. Uh, but there's a, a check in here, a gift. And... Uh, I appreciate this very, very much and everything. And uh, we'll, we'll have to sit down and meet about that, Brother Tony. <laughs> I don't think I allotted for that in the budget at all and everything. But, no, but uh, the Lord did. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, but uh, I, appreciate, uh, I appreciate this very, very much. And uh, I, uh, on behalf of, of myself and on behalf of our family, I want to say thanks. And I, I, I love y'all very much. Amen. Thank y'all for doing this. Appreciate it very much. We want to make it a little easier for you, brother. Take that burden off. Amen. I appreciate I appreciate this very much. Uh, it's it's a, a difficult time, but God's grace is sufficient. Right. Yeah. Battling this cancer. And I asked God the other day to tell Mom, I said, Hello. Everything I have, I'd give to have Mom back yes. one more day. But she's in a better place. And I don't want the house here for kids. But I want to say I love you all very much. And thank you for the demonstration of your love toward me and my family. And we appreciate it very much and we love you all. Thank you very much. Well, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> but uh, We're going to go back here and get ready. Yeah, you're going to go. Uh, yeah, if y'all go prepare to get ready. And again, for everybody that's here, we have a bag for everybody that's here today. But, uh, well, I hope to see everybody back in your place uh, 
this evening. Uh, uh, we'll continue on in our study in the book of 2 Timothy and uh, uh, we'll have some more song and uh, some more testimony time tonight. Amen. And also, what we're talking about, answer prayer. Brother Scott started work here today. I'll do a job. Praise be to God. That's answer prayer. Amen. God's, God's wonderful. Amen. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Praise be to the name. Amen. Glory. Glory. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. Amen. 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 Oh, he's worthy of our praise, is he not? Amen. Not only this morning, but every morning he's worthy of our praise. Praise be to God. Amen. But at this time, I guess we'll stand and we'll dismiss and reconvene tonight if it be the Lord's will. But uh, brother, uh, uh, brother Larry, if you would, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer this morning, please? I will say this. When, when Tony, uh, I think it's Mark, we're talking about that. I admire that church so much. I've had a and I know how much name you've got.